Our union story is there to be seen We've won many victories and we've suffered defeats But as I turn through the pages and look back through time This one single question stands out in my mind Today we may prosper, today we live free But if it weren't for the union, where would we be? It's our union, our union that defends our rights But our union's as strong as our will is to fight For the union is you and the union is me So stand up and stand by our union In 1983, the man the Missos supported for ACTU president became Prime Minister of Australia and brought sweeping change. The historic accord was reached between the government and the labour movement. In 1983, we for the first time ever in our history as a union in Australia realised our capacity to participate in the government of Australia because we were finally given an opportunity. The nature of trade unionism was changing, changing fast. There is nothing more enjoyable than having a brawl with a boss. Nothing more enjoyable in this life than booting the hell out of the boss. And we're all taking a fair bit of readjusting to doing it another way. Uh, because it brings people together in a much more thoughtful way. Um, they've got to really sit down and analyse what they're about. Uh, and I think that's going to make a more sophisticated union in the 90s. Coverage still expanded. Sailmakers, librarians, home care workers, private domestic workers, monorail workers, disabled workers. With the Accord and the Labour government had come the ideas of award restructuring and workplace reform. Work would be organised in new, more democratic ways, with workers having more say, more training and more rewards. You can't sell trade unionism in 1991 on the basis that you achieved superannuation in 1985 or annual leave uh, loading in the 1970s. That's important, we ought to be proud of our history, but you also got to ensure that you've got an ongoing plan of action about best positioning yourself to secure appropriate wage and condition outcomes, but also about improving your service in the field. And the MISOs every year have a new plan of action. As we build the resources, and I still refer to myself as being part of that union because I'm a member and proud to be a member, and you've got to look to what we can do in the future to provide a better service to people. Because if you ever think that you've done as much as you can, then frankly you ought to get out of the union movement because you are not living up to what workers expect of you. By 1991, the Miscellaneous Workers Union, which had started with 30 members in that tiny room in Trades Hall, was 135,000 strong and had moved into its new headquarters. In 1992, the biggest amalgamation of them all was achieved when the MISOs and the Liquor Trades Union amalgamated to form a massive and progressive trade union. The new union was dedicated to protection, service and strength. But would it be able to deal with fundamental challenges in a sometimes hostile future? The basic philosophy of labour is simple to me and that is that you use the organised strength of workers, if we're talking industrially, or of the community as a whole if we're talking politically, to try and maximise growth on the one hand and to equitably and decently look after those who are least able to look after themselves. Those principles don't change. They are fundamental. But if you're going to be able to give effect to those fundamental principles then you have to be organisationally flexible and forward-looking. That, in my judgment, has been the strength of this great union and its leadership. The world is changing all the time, technology is changing, dramatic changes are taking place at the workplace. Uh, there's, uh, there will always be the requirement for a strong, independent and democratic trade union movement to be, to be able to look after the wage and salary earners, uh, irrespective of, uh, of what happens in the future. If you abolished unions tomorrow, you would need to reinvent them next year because people would uh, become so exploited and they would very quickly decide to band together because that's why unions came into existence, for people to get together and uh, 
give themselves some bargaining power and to give themselves some strength against uh, employers. It gave me satisfaction to work for a place like the Meadows. I thought they were caring, not only to their members, but also, as I said, to their staff. And it was a different atmosphere to working anywhere else. I'm concerned. I feel that the things could de degenerate into things that happened about 50 years ago. And if they don't continue in, in unity, and continue with the trade union movement, a lot could happen. It could change the face of Australia. Don't think about it, do it. Join the union if you want protection. You still have these disparate groups of people with huge variety of backgrounds, huge variety of skill levels that want and require collective assistance. So, you know, in a sense, nothing changes. Those who occupy positions within the FMWU are but passing guardians.